Shalom, brothers and sisters and family. Shalom. Shalom. Welcome to another Sabbath day. I also like to welcome my 9,300 plus Facebook followers and my YouTube subscribers. Welcome to another Sabbath day. Shalom. This includes you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, those of the diaspora, dispersed throughout. Africa, India, Europe, Asia, and the islands. Those are the sub-Saharan and transatlantic slave trade. Shalom, family. My day, today's topic is going to be the Bible. It's not everybody's book. Today I will focus on showing you that the Bible is not everybody's book. How can the Bible pertain to our enemies who cut us off from our Elohim that the Most High God sent against us. How can it be they buy they book you know how could the Bible be for them too? These are the same enemies today that are ruling over us, selling us the foul bread or food in our communities, or oppressing us in the streets, that are fooling us that we are the same people, but we tremble when we are pulled over. Our life is not guaranteed. The Most High God sent these enemies against us. Let us prove that. Let's get Deuteronomy 28 and 48 to prove that these enemies were sent against us. Come on. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Serve who? Thine enemies. We're going to serve our enemies, which we are today. Come on. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Who sent them against us? The Lord. Okay, come on. In hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee. Okay. Now, that tells you that the Bible is not everybody's book, right there. Because what people are serving their enemies for food? Anytime we want food, who, who we got to go to? Do we own all of the, the food dispensaries and places that we go buy food today. When we want to go eat, we go to Walmart, Winco, and uh, Abelson, Kroger's, and all of these stores around here. Do do we own them? Do, do uh, the nation of Israel as a whole own any of these stores? Okay, that's one. We go to our enemies for food. For water. The water that we got running in our house today is plugged up to uh, by the city. Who runs the city? You know, when, when I was a kid, water was free. We did not pay for water for water when I was a kid. Now, at first, the water bill was like 25 cents, a dollar or something. Now it went from that to, you pay hundreds of dollars for water bill. And they keep lying to you saying that, oh, it costs that much money. It doesn't cost that much money for the water. They just lying to you. It's free. It drop fall from the sky. You know the stores. You going to go buy bottled water? We we don't bottle water. We don't own no dispensaries and bottle water up. Most like God said, He gonna He gonna send these enemies against you for food. This is telling you today that we are serving these enemies for for food, for water, and, and for clothing. If you guys look on the back of your your, your uh, shirt uh, tags. It's going to say made in somewhere else. Not where, not made by Israelites. If it is, we, we are working in the factories, but we are not, we are not the one that owned the company. And even, you know, uh, the, the Jay-Z's and all of them, they got these clothing uh, uh, lines. They're getting, their, they're getting all the uh, fabric and stuff from their enemies. As a matter of fact, the enemies are sewing the stuff up and they're just putting their label on it. That will make the shirts and stuff more expensive. Because without without them just putting their name on there and upping the price a little bit more, the people that, that sold the shirts could just sell it for 20, 30% more. Or maybe 40% less, I mean. So, so, uh, instead of a shirt being uh, $75, they could shirt, sell the shirt for $30. And still make a giant profit. And, and one of all things. So, driver's license, your ID. Who you got to go to for that? 
Who do you go to for to get ID? Do you go to the Pookie around the corner? No. Man, need you cut me some ID up. This book is 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 telling you you're gonna be serving your enemies for food, water, clothing, one of all things. Your house. You can't get away from it. Your education. Your knowledge of God. And then say, and he, that one, those enemies, shall put a yoke of iron upon, his, upon thy neck until he has destroyed thee. Let's see, the Arab had a yoke of iron on our necks and the white man. And we both destroyed because they put us in, in their religions. Now we think we Muslims and think we Christians. Watch me that white Jesus. Mm. Somebody give me a paper towel, please. Are we serving our enemies today? The truth of this Bible separates you from the other nations. It is only speaking to you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, those of the diaspora. Thank you. Dispersed throughout the island, throughout all the lands, whose forefathers went through the sub-Saharan and the transatlantic slave trade. We serve our enemies for everything. We are scattered throughout all the lands because the Most High God said that He would scatter us. If you are adding other people in the conversation, when your father is talking only to you, the Most High God is talking only to you, then you are creating confusion because this is what these so-called preachers want to add everybody in the conversation because if, if we leave them out, we, they wouldn't get any money. But the Most High God is only talking to His people. Let's get Deuteronomy 32 and 26. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Our remembrance have, have ceased. Every nation today can tell you who they are and where they originated. I can ask you so-called black... Uh, I can ask 10 so-called black men what's your nationality and I would get 10 I would get 5 or 6 different answers because some of them would be the same oh I'm black oh I'm, I'm, I'm Asiatic oh I'm African American oh I'm Christian oh I'm Muslim we ask you your religion but you know you, you hear that kind of, this kind of stuff you ask a black man what's his, what nation he come from, he gonna tell you all kind of crap. He don't know nationality come from nation. What nation you come from? Oh, I'm American. You're not American. You're not the same people as those white folks. Let's, let's prove that the Most High God told us that we, we would be like this. It, it's not regarding all people because the fact is, once you start adding everybody else into the conversation, this Bible becomes confusion, a, a book of confusion, which it is today because this white man has attached himself to our, our book, which has nothing to do with him. In Isaiah 1 and 3, Dominic. The ox knows his owner. The ox knows who his owner is. Who owns him? Come on. And, and the ass, his master's crib. A dumb jack, a jackass know where he lives. You can take a jackass 50 miles away from here, from his house, and he'll find his way back home. Come on. But Israel do not know. Israel don't know. My people do not consider. They don't consider. That's why they got black and, you know, African American. I'm an Asiatic black man. You be looking at him like, wow. Yep. Dumb as an ox and stubborn as a jackass. The Most High God is talking about us when when He says that. He 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 de, He describes two animals: one one dumb, one stubborn. He said, "These are my people: stubborn and dumb." Dominic, stop shaking the table, please. The ox is dumb. It's a dumb animal. The Most High God calling us dumb. He knows who owns and feeds him. A jackass. You can drop him off, 50, like I said, 50 miles from home. And he will find his way back. 
a donkey knows where his home is. But you Israelites, you don't know who your Elohim is. You don't know your owner or your homeland. Nor do you consider. Continue, Isaiah 1 and 4, Dominic. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger, they have gone away backward. Hmm, sinful nation, laden with sin. The Israelites are a sinful nation, this hasn't changed. Let's get First Timothy 1 and 8. Jordan. But we know but we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. If you use the law lawfully, the law is good. It's good for you. When you use the law lawfully, it's good for you. Not to not to oppress a man. The law of the most high is good if it is, if it is used lawfully. Not that the Pharisees use the law. The law teaches the Israelites how to love one another as they love themselves. And how to love the Most High God with all your heart, mind, and soul. That's what the law does. It teaches you how to do those things. You know, and most of you Christians don't know that because you, you know what? You, you are adding too many things into it. And you, like I said, the fact is, you got a simple, ingredient, a simple recipe, but you're trying to complicate things by adding all this other stuff that doesn't even, that doesn't even go in the recipe. And you think people are going to like it. it. It leads people astray. Come on. First Timothy 1 and 9. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers, and murderers of mothers, and man for manslaves. Okay. And Isaiah 1 and 4 says, A sin... Uh, 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 a sinful nation. A sinful nation. This is what a sinful nation is. Israel is a sinful nation. This is what the law is made for. For a sinful nation. None is righteous. So the laws are for the lawless. Look at all of the Israelite communities. You can look at the filth in the streets, the buildings, how people are dressed, and what's coming out of their mouth. You would recognize there are no laws in the community. You could just drive into an Israelite community and you can and you can know immediately that there is no law in their community. It doesn't make, because the fact is being poor don't make you have to be sinful. Don't make don't that being poor doesn't make that make your streets to be all nasty and, and, and junky like it is. Being poor doesn't make you you have to be walking up and down the street selling your body. Being poor doesn't make you have to just be doing drugs all the time. If you have the laws in your in your in your uh, Mind and your spirit being poor won't affect you from doing the law, but you can walk in our communities and know that you, that you are amongst a bunch of sinful people. And you can say you you can blame the white man and all this other stuff about that. That ain't the truth. It's just that you refuse to keep the laws. Continue one First Timothy one and ten. For whoremongers. For them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured, perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Mm. So, so Apostle Paul just named a few of the things. He didn't, he didn't include everything. He just, but it'd be any other thing contrary to sound doctrine, contrary to the law. Israel is a sinful nation. We are the biggest whoremongers of all nations. You have Israelite men in these neighborhoods 30 years old and have 30 children. Making them a minimum wage and are not taking care of any of their children. That, if, if, that's not whore, if that's not the definition of whoremongering, I don't know what is. They had a guy, I was watching Facebook a, a while back. This guy, 32 years old, had 31 kids by different, all these different women. And in the, in the, in the uh, and he was getting upset with the you know with the court system because they were taking child support out on him and you know he just making minimum wage dude ain't got a, 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 a piece of sense in him just out having sex ain't got no skills nothing and now he's trying to tell the judge to be lenient on him 
you know, take the child support away from him. No, they should have cut his penis off by now. Because the dude out there, you know, just spreading love and he ain't, and he ain't taking care of nobody. You know, I'm going to tell you, a sinful nation. This is what's what our people do. You know, just spreading love and, 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 and ain't taking care of none of them. Don't know how to do anything. No, I, I'm not, you know, I'm like I said, I'm not against a man, you know, for procreating, but if, if you got a hundred acres out, out there in the country, and you a man, you got 30 kids, and you growing crops, and got, got all kind of cattle, and all kind of sheep, and everything, and, and you know how to build your own house, and stuff, you out there building a house, every time you have a kid, okay, I got, got extra room, got a playground out here, uh, you know, I got a, got a school, where I can school all my kids, you know, taking care of all your kids, <laughs> I ain't, I ain't, I'm not upset with you, I'm, you know, all praise to you. But you out there in the neighborhood and you just having babies and you can't take care of none of them? You leave the woman and you just move on like you ain't got no kids? Y'all you know, don't understand the, the problem that that creates because next to these kids be out there in the community having sex with each other because they don't know you they daddy. Let's get Ecclesiastes 23 and 17. Dominic, read that. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. What? All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. Are you talking about the loaf of bread is sweet? No. What? It's talking about like, you know, ladies and that, all that. Yeah, all, all bread is sweet to a whoremonger. Come on. He will not leave off till he die. He ain't gonna stop till he die. So th this is this is a warning to to you to you ladies. The Most High God is warning you in this Bible. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. Before you lay out lay down with a man, you got to know whether you're a whoremonger or not. If you don't know nothing about this man, Dominic, gonna shake the table. If you don't know anything about this man. Why are you laying down with it? The most like God said, all bread is sweet to a whoremonger. A whoremonger would have sex with any woman, a young woman, old, short, tall, fat, skinny, or ugly. He doesn't care, and he will not stop until it kills him. The most like God is telling you women that you can't change a whoremonger, only the laws can change. Can change him. Continue, Jordan, with Isaiah one and five. Why should you be stricken any more? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart faint. The more the Most High God punishes us, the more rebellious the Israelites have become. The entire nation of Israel is sinful. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, those of the diaspora, we all are sinful. Continue, Isaiah one and six. From the sole of the foot, even to the head, there is no soundness in it, but wound and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. The Most High God is telling you that He is punishing you from the sole of your feet to the top of your head with diseases. You are not healed from diseases before you get other diseases. The Most High is punishing you, and you don't even know it. Think about this punishment. Our feet are being chopped off from diabetes due to disobeying the dietary laws of the Most High God. The Most High God is destroying the woman, the women of Judah's hair because they are envying their oppressor and all of their, those weeds, extensions, etc. are putting their hair out. He is destroying us from the sole of our feet, from them diabetes. The top of our head, these women got bald spots all in their head. They, their hairline starts back in the back of their head where the ponytail is supposed to be. Every time you turn around, their hairline goes further and further back. And these young women, not, I'm, I'm not talking about women my age, I'm talking about women 20 years old. 
They got to wear wigs because they, they their forehead is so bold. Let's get let's let's get uh Isaiah three and sixteen, George, start there. Moreover, the Lord saith, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth nets, and wanton eyes, walking and minting as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. The so called black woman is proud, arrogant, and vain. That's that's haughty. Always wanting. You know, you, that's the thing that, that these women want. They want something from a man. A lot of these black women, you know, and, and not other, only black women, you know, the, the, uh, the term gold digger. But the fact is, they all want something from a man. Want a man to do, do something for them. Stretch forth eyes. Wanting. They're they not satisfied with what they got. They always got their head up looking and wanting. Haunting. You know, Think that they they sex is better than anybody else's. That's being haughty. Three and seventeen continue. Therefore, the Lord will smite with the with the scab, the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. Okay, what that is scab, the crown of the head with the, of the daughters of Zion. What the scab is? The scab is like a disease. Okay, but you, 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 George, it's around you. You see these women with all these sores and stuff, where their hair won't grow at the, the crown of their head. The crown, where's the crown of your head at? Just talk. Yeah, right there in the middle. You got sores all in their head. The hair won't grow. Sores. Why? And, and what else? crown of the head and what else of the daughters of Zion and the Lord will discover their secret parts mm. well, I wonder what their secret parts are uh, if you had to guess where their secret parts were what would you say their private parts okay their private parts the most high has smited the, your head taking your hair because of your haughtiness and because you d just don't Obey the dress code. He will discover your secret parts or your private parts. Continue, continue Isaiah 3 and 18. Amen. Because the fact is, you're being haughty and you're putting all of these things in your head, getting, getting all these chemicals in your head, and those, that's what causing those sores. That stuff staying in your head too long and, and, and it's just killing your, 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 uh, all your brain cells. And then he discovered your secret part because you cover your, your your that area up, that vaginal area up when it's supposed to be breathing. Don't supposed to be wearing pants. Okay, he gonna discover. It. Let's see what he gonna discover it with. Continue on. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calves and their round tires like the moon. See, this is a, this is when the Most High God had decked us. Covered the women with all types of jewelry and ornaments, all the way to their feet. Every time, what they say, they're tingling as they walk because they had they had shoes and stuff and, and, and ornaments on their feet. Every time they walk, it sounded like bells ringing. They had they had jewelry all over their body, and see, he said he like said y'all just understand what what transpired with our women. Y'all need to understand what happened because. This is what our women was at first. Listen to uh, read, uh, read start at eighteen again. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet, and their calves, and their round tires like the moon. They had ornaments on their feet, on their calves. You know, their round tires like the moon. The Most High will take away all the jewelry that He gave you. Okay, come on. Come on. The chains and the bracelets and the mufflers. A lot of jewelry. Come on. The bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings. He had, you had you had jewelry. Our women had jewelry all over them. Had it on their legs, on their their, their ankles, on their uh, on their calves, on their forehead. Come on. 
the rings and nose jewels. They had they had nose jewels. They had jewelry in their noses. Come on. The changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins. All, all this jewelry. Come on. The glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. And it shall come to pass that in the stead of the sweet smell there shall be stink. That's that's where your private parts are. Instead of, instead of it smelling sweet like it's supposed to, it's gonna be stinky. Come on. And instead of girdle, the rent, and instead of well set hair, balding. You said you're having a nice set of hair, all all uh, crowded and wrapped up and braided up. It's going to be baldness. That's what our women are today. All of this stuff here is happening to our women today. Come on. And instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth, and burning, instead of beauty. Mm. See where we are falling. This is talking about our women. All of these things has happened to our women. Let me explain them. Because you women don't know how to dress your secret parts will stink instead of wearing a fancy stomacher you know your secret parts stink because you don't know how to dress you got on these tight pants and, and most of the time you go to the doctor he just tell you wear a dress wear lighter pants lighter clothing put a dress on because your area that vaginal area needs to breathe it doesn't need to be locked up with with, with tight pants on don't have don't have no tight uh, all these tight clothing up, up. Closing it in. It needs to breathe. That's why it smells so bad when you're walking around with, with, you know, with those pants on all the time. All these yeast infections and all this stuff. It's because you're wearing the clothes that you shouldn't wear. So, yeah, it stink. Your area down there stinks. Instead of wearing a fancy stomacher with your fancy garments, you be wearing garments made from sackcloth. You're going into slavery. Rough garment mean you would fall from heaven into servitude. Many of you women have have stink coming from your private area because of the tight pants you wear, which doesn't permit that area to breathe. Instead of well set hair, you have baldness. Why did this happen? First, let's deal with the stench coming from the private area. Let's get Deuteronomy twenty two and five. Dominic, come read that. The woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. What? Read that again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all who that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, this is our dress code. I'm not getting just on the men, on the women. I'm also addressing the men. The Most High God is not just dressing the women. In Deuteronomy 22 and 5, he's addressing what the woman should wear and what the man should wear or should not wear. A woman should not be wearing things that pertain to men. What pertain to men? Pants. Pants. Woman should not be wearing, walking around in pants. That's why they have a stitch because they are disobeying this commandment alone is creating all kind of problems for them. Yeast infection, all kind of all kind of diseases just violating this law and a man walking around with dresses and women panties and all this other stuff high heel shoes and, 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 and wigs and weaves and all that stuff looking like a woman and, and all this most like God said he's against that too so you went, you men walking around looking like women and, and, and trying to be more and more effeminate each, each time you look at them most like God is not, is not down with that either it's all cross-dressing. The law which is for the lawless, the law which is for the lawless. You Israelites say the Israelite woman shouldn't wear pants. Let me read that again. The law which is for the lawless. You Israelites says the, the Israelite woman shouldn't wear pants. That's what the lawless is for. This is for the lawless. Those are you Israelites. Because you you are lawless as I don't know what. And the Israelite woman should not wear pants because you disobey the law. You have stench. 
He's talking to you know the Bible is not everybody's book. This is, this tells you exactly who you are by these type of these type of things. You walking around with these tight pants on, and, and, and you know you know a lot of time men ain't gonna tell you your problem. They're going to make, expect you to know. Damn, I smell that. She don't smell it. Nobody's still around long enough. You know, you're like, yeah, she stinks down there. She fine as hell, but she, she stink down there. Walking around with them tight pants on and she don't even know her own problem. And she probably smell it herself. Now for the bald, baldness, here's a law that you women are violating. Let's get Proverbs 3.31. Now read, read that. Envy. Envy, thou not the oppressor, and choose not of his ways. Envy thou not the oppressor. What does that say, Dominic? So envy the, your enemies the enemies, or, you know, like, like the way you want to look, like, like, uh, like black people, when, uh, when black women be trying to wake their hair straight, and they want to, uh, want to, like, to act like that, and what white people do it. That not only just, just, just Esau, the most like God say, envy thou not be oppressor. Who's oppressing us in our communities? Our enemies? Okay, who are they? Um, Jordan. Like, white, uh, white. When you when you go into uh, our so-called black and Hispanic communities and you see the grocery stores, who are they? In the, in the gas stations, who own all of these stores? Uh, China, Asians. White. Because the fact is. Y'all don't got to get y'all mind off just y'all thinking just just only uh, white people are your oppressors. In our in, in our community, because y'all got to understand the crappy council in our communities. You know they and like I said, they might not be the same set, but they're gonna be similar sets in every community, even in Africa, even even in Africa, because you know the places that we live, we don't run those stores. You know, they might have the Chinese man, you know, the Arab man, the Syrian man. But you go in our neighborhood, all of them are enemies because you know what? You know, they got stores and stuff, but I guarantee they ain't putting out one dime of that money back in the community that they got it from. They there just to rob you every every doggone day of the year. And most of them are not going to allow you to work in their stores because you know the Arab man he gonna hire all his people the Indian man gonna hire, hire you know some, sometimes the Indian man will give you a job because I've seen other you know in them 7-Eleven I've seen other people other than just Indian people because if you know nobody want to work all these crazy hours 24-7 you know but most of these stores oh these people you know like I said I've seen Vietnamese uh, uh, grocery stores it ain't nothing but giving these people. They ain't seen no black folks and they ain't seen no other Hispanics or nothing in those stores working. So, yeah, they're all your enemies because you know what? They open up these shops in your community. They ain't put no money in there. They ain't put no money in the build up schools. You know, this, you know we give them 10% back uh, uh, from, the, from the people we took from. They ain't got no, they ain't got no problem because all that money they're they taking away from you, they putting their kids through college. Y'all, y'all in there buying hair weed and stuff, envying your oppressors, cost you all this money. You breaking the bank and you taking all the money out of out of your children's hands, out of your children's pockets, all the things that your children need, and giving it to some of your enemies. They ain't thanking you for it. Matter of fact, they busting you up in your face for it. Throwing throwing a throwing acetone and stuff at you. Y'all shaking of the head. The most like God told us not to envy the other nations 
who are oppressing us and choose none of their ways. What do you think you women are doing when you want your hair straight like like good hair? Oh, I want some good hair. Straight hair is not good hair. That'd be the first hair to fall out. Again, Again, I must reiterate that this Bible only refers to you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Those are the diaspora scattered throughout all nations. Why are we the down? Why are we the downtrodden in all nations? Psalms eighty-three and two, Jordan. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they and they that hate thee have lifted up thy head. All the nations wherein we we reside are enemies to the Most High God. The proof is that none of these nations honor the Sabbath, feast days, new moons, the dietary laws, all the moral and civil laws. Continue on. Psalm 83 and 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. This crafty counsel is why we are lost sheep in all nations being fooled that we are that we and the former slave masters are one people. When they don't treat us like themselves, even when we worship the same God as them. They, but they always come out, we one people. They take your taxes and your money, and they, and, and like I'm saying, their systems, they, they have these, oh, we ain't responsible for what the police force does in your community. But they choose not to do anything. Oh, no, uh, he didn't do nothing wrong yet. He killed five people last week. They were, you know, they shot them all in the back. Got him on camera. The kids running away, running, running from him, and he just got out of his car and just started firing. Oh, he didn't do nothing. He was justified killing. That's that one people doctrine. We all one people, and the Bible tell you that yeah, we we want to be like them, but we go to them for vengeance when they slay us. Yeah. Come on. Psalms 83.4 They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Aren't we cut off? We are worshiping their gods. Don't know from which nation we derive. Neither do we remember our nation. We don't know where we come from. We don't remember our nation. So we cut off that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. We don't know we Israel. We cut off with that one nation doctrine. Oh, that, that's, let's be all one one people. We all Americans here. You ain't no damn American. You, only that white man is an American. Only he only the only person that get full lit of the system that when the white man pulled him over, he can cuss that white man, that policeman out. He gonna get nothing going to happen to him. You get out of here, like I'm saying, you just ask the officer, officer uh, why, why, why am I being pulled over? Why you need my ID? I'm just sitting in my car with the keys out of it. And like I said, I'm just sitting in my car, wait, waiting. I'm sitting in my car eating lunch. Why did I give you my ID? You gonna get pulled out and get arrested and, and, and get arrested and go to jail. Have to pay our money. I'm gonna tell you. Let me ask that question again. Aren't we cut off? We're worshiping this white man's God and this Arab man's God. Don't know from which nation we derive, because you know what? If somebody asks you your nationality, you're gonna you're gonna say something simple and stupid. I don't, I, and it doesn't matter if you if you're in the Arab worshiping uh, countries, you're gonna say something simple and stupid, just like the people over here. And you know, because, just because you say you Islam. 
That's not your. That's not your God. That's just what the man. You know, in, in six twenty-seven in the Battle of Fars, when, when uh, Muhammad came against the Jews, he said, "Islam, you know, Islam of the of, of the of the, uh, of the sword." He was cutting throats. So you had to say Islam. You had to say Assalamu Alaikum. Or you don't have a cutthroat. So that's not your God either. You know, Allah ain't your God either. So you confused about who you are. The Bible is written to a specific people. When you think it includes all people, you have never received the message, or you simply refused it. After we were cut off, then comes, let's all be one people, or Gentiles. Let's all be Gentiles, which is where we are today. Let me show you this in the Bible. Jordan, I want you to read 1 Maccabees 1. Start at verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. King Antiochus was a real guy. So the Bible is not a, a book that tells you names that, that, that you can't research and, and find out that these are names. He was born 215 B.C., died 164 B.C. He reigned from 175 to 164 B.C. He was a Greek ruler. This right... This writing that he wrote to his kingdom was a law against the Jews because he knew we had we had laws and and an Elohim that we had a God. Continue, First Maccabees forty two, one First Maccabees one, verse forty two. And every one should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. All the other nations quickly agreed to leave their laws, including many of the Israelites. Continue. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. The laws are for the lawless. Many Israelites didn't want to live under the law, as we don't like to be governed by the laws today. This is why we are confused about who we are. Continue. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, and they, that they should follow the strange laws of the land. These letters were sent into the holy city and the surrounding cities of Judah that they must follow the ways of the heathens. Now, did the Greeks love the Elohim of Israel? Did, they, did he love the Elohim of Israel when he, when he told them and forbade them to uh, follow their own God? No. Every time Esau gained rulership, he made certain that the name of Israel was no longer existed among the children of Israel. He made certain of that. So, the Romans killed the Messiah, the disciples, and the apostles and followers. What do you think the purpose of them doing this was? What do you think the purpose of them killing uh, the Messiah and, and all of the followers, the disciples? What do, what do they say in rulership? Chop off the what? Chop off that what? The head. Chop off the head. When you want to conquer a nation, that's what you do. That's what you do. You don't go in and, and, and destroy the minions. You cut off the head because the tail gonna follow whoever the new leaders are. Don't you see we the tail right now? We follow. All the new leaders. We follow whoever the leaders are. Because our hands been chopped off. Christ. All of the disciples. All of the followers. Anybody that knew about that Elohim head was chopped off. By the Romans. This was the falling away. Because the fact is, when they chopped those heads off, we followed anybody that came before us. With any new religion. Okay, let's see what this let's, let's see what this because they started this at first right here.
Come on. First Maccabees one forty five. Come on. What was the, that, this is the, what was in the letter. Come on. And forbid burnt offering. We don't want them. Uh, we don't want you sacrificing to your God. Come on. And sacrifice. We don't want no sacrifices. And drink offerings. No drink they, offerings. Come on. In the temple. And that they should profane the Sabbath. Profane the, the Sabbath day. means that you don't keep them. And festival days. No, we, we, you don't keep those days. You profane them. You work on them. You, you, you cook on them. You do all kinds of stuff on them. No, we don't want you to keep in those days. Come on. If the Greeks, Esau loved the, the Most High God, why are they making it against the law to serve the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Because that's not the that's not the that's not the Elohim of their fathers. Sure, Esau came from Abraham, Isaac, but he he, he was he, Abraham, uh, the sin of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau, not Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Abraham, Isaac, and Esau is not the same God as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because Esau serves the devil. We are not serving our God. We are serving their gods. We are still profaning the Sabbath day by working, shopping, and cooking on this day. All of this applies today. We're not serving the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob anymore. We're serving the gods of Esau. We're serving his God, Satan. Most of y'all serving Satan and you don't even know it. Because you're falling behind the devil. First Maccabees 146. And pollute the sanctuary and holy people. Our places of worship are polluted with idolatry, with that so called white Jesus on the walls, Christmas trees in, 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 in the building around. Uh, Around, around November and December, pork and shellfish sold out the kitchen of these churches, homosexuality, no knowledge of the laws of the Most High God. Still today, you, you, you don't, you, like I said, y'all don't understand that the laws that, that Annie Oceans created back then during the Greeks, the white man through Roman and through all these other captivities, he didn't change none of that. We are like that. You can check these off. Pollute the sanctuary. Our sanctuary is still polluted. Wow! And this over a thousand some years ago. Like this white man love love God. He don't love God. Not neither do y'all. That want to follow up behind him. I'm just putting it where it is because the fact is, this is not his Bible. And you guys are all going contrary to the Bible. You're being warned. I'm going to tell you, before it's all over, it's going to come to mind one day that you were warned about this, and you didn't do anything, and you just said, forget what that is that he said, and it's going to come to mind at a very crucial time when your soul is on the line. Check yourself. I'm going to tell you, it's not going to be a good day for you. Come on. First Maccabees one forty seven. Set up altars and groves and chapels of idols and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts. Did I say we pork in the churches? The Greeks, uh, that so called white man, pushed pork upon us, knowing it was against our dietary laws. The Bible was and still is not for all people. It's not for all people. Continue on. First Maccabees one forty eight. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised. And make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanliness and profanation. It was even against the law to circumcise our children, keeping the covenant that the Most High God made with our forefather Abraham. We were also tasked with making our children's souls abominable by feeding them unclean things like pork, shellfish, and fish without fins and scales. Continue, First Maccabees one forty nine. <clears throat> To end, no, wait might, a minute. See it again. To end, to the end, they might forget the law and change all their all the ordinances. Okay, what does that mean, Jordan? Because this is what this is what King Antiochus' purpose was, all from the get go, from this letter. This is his purpose. This was his design. This is the effect that he wanted to to happen. What was that effect, Jordan? It's telling you right there. 
to forget the law? This is, he said, to the end. This is what he wanted the end outcome to be. To the end. This is the point he wanted to, to, to be, the conclusion. I want them to forget the law and forget all their ordinances. This is things in the, in the ordinances of other law. The details in the law. He wanted us to forget the law and forget all of that stuff. Have we forgotten the law? This is, this is their whole objective. For us to forget the law and all the ordinances of the Most High God. So when somebody come back and bring them to your remembrance, you act like a fool because you want you love your God so your devil so much that you don't even want to think about your God. Man, you better get that out of my face. Because you love this oppression. And you want to stay in it. How can the Bible be for a nation who came against us, creating laws against us so that we might forget the law? They work to change all the ordinances in the land. Our ordinance was based upon the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. That was our ordinances. That's First Maccabees 1 and 50. If, if this, is a, this is their judgment. So let, let's see if this white man's judgment was, was for God. Come on. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king. He said he should die. That's your judgment. If you decide that you want to keep your most high, most high God's law, statutes, and commandments, you're going against the king, and he's going to put you to death. So, how could they? How could we? the Bible be for them when they were against the most high God from the beginning? All, the, all of these, these, are, these are white people. And, and the Romans would have fared no better. How can the Bible be for a nation who placed a penalty of death when we attempted to do as the Bible commandment commanded? How, how can it be for that nation? I'm confused. You know, I'm confused about it. I'm confused right here. How can that Bible be for that nation when they went against the Most High God and His people? Hmm. When that, when that crafty council, they that hate thee have lifted up the head in pride. Now start telling the Most High God's people what they should and shouldn't do. You can't worship your God anymore. Ain't that crafty council? I'm going to say it is. This, this is this is totally against the, 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 the hidden ones of the Most High God. For right now, we're hidden because we don't even know we're the Most High God's people. Most of most of us, this is brand new to us. We don't know we're the Most High God's people. We don't know that. Let's let's get First Maccabees one fifty one. In the self, in the self, same manner wrote he to his whole kingdom. And appointed overseers over all the people, commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city. Okay, not only did he implement a law, he gave a, 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 a severe judgment against violators of that law. He also appointed judges, uh, uh, appointed overseers to make certain that that law was followed, and they did an extra um to maintain that law. The, the, these were not idle words of Antiochus. You know, this was not a thought. 
you know, I'm thinking about doing this. No, this was not. He executed this. He appointed overseers in all the cities to make certain his laws were followed and the Jews sacrificed to their gods and ate the swine's flesh. He made certain that we ate pork. They, they had total control of even of what we eat and what we couldn't eat. We had to go to their, their, these parties and eat that pork. We didn't eat pork in the land. They brought pork to us. Made certain that we ate pork to defile our temple. They knew our God. And they didn't want us worshiping our God. So long as we didn't have our God with us, we got zero chance. They knew this at that time. Why y'all don't know that? This white man still knows this. Long as you are filthy and falling up behind them, you got zero chance of ruling. No chance. You, your children, your children's children, your children's children's children, and so on and so forth, going to go through the same stuff that you've been going through. Lost, confounded, and confused, don't know who the hell you are. And you, like I said, in the movie, the Matrix was a was sheer mockery of black folks because you so sleep and you won't come out of it. You just locked in the Matrix and all y'all like even the kids, you know, they are hell bent on staying in this Matrix. And people that's trying to get them out, like like the man say, you know, some of them don't want to. You can't get some of them. You can't. You, you, some some of the people that sleep, you need to leave them sleep because they are not ready to come out of the matrix. It'll mess them up. And some of y'all today, and that movie was a sheer mockery of, of, of the Israelites. Y'all need to watch that movie. After they profaned and defiled us, now. We are buying the foul bread from the today. We are buying the foul bread. Let's get Ezekiel 4 and 11. Ezekiel, Ezekiel 4 and 13, I'm at. And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whether I will drive them. Tommy, what are you doing? What is that in your hand? What in your hand? In your other hand? Why are you not following? Following the following? You need to pull your chair up. Or you just sitting over there doing anything, all kinds of stuff. No, get your get up. Don't scoot. Pick your chair up and come close to the table. Because you're not paying attention. I, I, these classes are not just for my sake. It's, it's really for y'all's sake. You know, one of these, one of these days, these classes are going to become relevant in your mind. And you know what? All the lessons that I've gone over with you guys, you're not going to, you know, like I said, you're going to have to find that out yourself. If you pay more attention, you'll know. They're really for you, for, for you guys, for your learning. Read that again. Ezekiel 4.13 The Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whither I will drive them. So what is this telling you, Dominic? Read this, look at the scripture, read it, and, and get on, on, tell me what it's saying to you. It, it'll take you back to another precept. Okay, George, what is it telling you? Make 
We went over that precept. Deuteronomy 28, 48 was the first precept we went over. Read it. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemy, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst. That's what we're going to get out of the foul bread, because the fact is, we're not going to have control of it. He's going to send the enemies against us, and we're going to be eating the foul bread, because... Guess what? We don't control none of the farms and all you idiots out there, you know, you should eat this, you should eat that. Y'all don't get it. I don't care where you, what you say you should eat. If it's lawful, you know, like Apostle Paul said, don't ask no questions about it. Just eat it. Because the fact is, if it's lawful to eat, don't ask no questions. Because if, if, you, if you start asking questions about where it come from and all this other stuff, it's, it's gonna, you know, you, you ain't gonna be able to eat it. You just gonna starve to death because we are gonna eat our defiled bread. It don't matter. If you vegan and you eat all vegetables and all this other stuff, they gonna be inspect, insecticides and stuff that they putting in there and they not telling you. You can go organic if you want to. It's still gonna be defiled. You're not gonna be able to get past the Most High God's judgments. He's judged us with this, and he said, you're going to eat it. You're going to read that again, Ezekiel 4.13. Okay. Top of page 6. And the Lord said. Who said it? And the Lord said, the, most, the Messiah said, because this is this is this is the Messiah. Because you know what? Every time you say the Lord, it, it ain't always the Most High God. The Lord, the Lord is the Messiah too. He said, "Come on." Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread. They gonna Come eat on. their defiled bread, like I said. He said it. Come on. Among the Gentiles. Whether I will drive them, you know, like I'm saying, you can't, you can't avoid that. So most of the time, if if you if you gonna go get chicken, go get chicken. If you gonna go get fish, go get fish. It got fins and scales. Don't worry about none of the other stuff because you know what? A lot of you Israelites, uh, if if you, if I'm gonna tell you the test that you should be able to pass, you know, find a law that you're violating. If if it's violating the law. Then shut the hell up. If it's violating, if it's not violating the law, shut up. This is what, this is the reason why Apostle Paul told him in, in uh, I think it's First Corinthians uh, chapter ten, in in round verse twenty or something. He said, "Don't ask questions. Don't ask no questions. If the, you know if somebody is, is invite you to you know a banquet or whatever, don't ask no questions. If you had one of them shanties, you know, don't ask no questions." If you know, if you if you want a beef sandwich, and don't ask no question about where the beef came from, and oh, we 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 just blessed the beef over with Shiva or something. No, if you know about it, you can't eat it. But if if, if you don't ask questions, if a if a beef sandwich, okay, let's let's eat it and don't ask questions. Because if you do ask start asking questions, and you gonna find some about it, it's gonna you know you gonna you gonna starve to death. Because you're not going to get past the Most High God's judgment. He has already judged us on that. We're going to eat the foul bread. It don't matter where. Don't matter. If you go in the grocery store and it's chicken, if it's fish uh, 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 that's lawful with fins and scales, I ain't asking no questions because you know what? If I start asking questions, we can't avoid it. You know, like they might pack and say, it's, 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 uh, it's ocean caught and all this stuff, they can put that on the label, but they, yeah, we soaked it in the ocean before we put it on the shelf, but we raised it over here on this farm. Just like I'm saying, you know, the fact, the fact is that that scripture right there tells you, if, if, and the Apostle Paul just told, told the disciples to just follow, look, don't ask questions, because if you ask questions and stuff, just eat the food. If it's lawful, somebody invites you to a dinner and it's lawful, 
the food on the on the table is lawful, don't ask any questions. Just eat it. Because if you start asking questions, you'd be like, damn, I can't eat this. You know. Now, you know somebody don't bring you a plate. I don't care how lawful it is. Hey, man, I bought some turkey from this Thanksgiving dinner. Can y'all eat that? Hmm? No. What about a Christmas plate? No. Hey, man, I... You know, I know you. You know, I know you got a Christmas plate. Uh, I brought you a Christmas plate. Why you can't eat that? Because it's uh, it's one of the unholy uh, foods. Holiday. Yeah, because it's idolatry. That that's been that's that's a god they sacrificed to. Because they cooked that meat on that day, sacrificing to their god. That's a god behind all of these holidays. Hey, Amen. Bought you some Easter eggs. Bought you an Easter plate. Here's some of these rolls we cooked on Easter. Man, you better get that stuff out of my face. Because, you know, you can't eat that stuff. That's that Now, that's not defiled bread. That is idolatrous bread. It is defiled, but it's defiled. It's abominable bread. Okay, when this so-called white man has defiled us, our enemies took control of every resource we need. It's funny how the Israelites as slaves grew all the produce in America, Brazil, the islands, etc. Now, by majority, we have no knowledge of farming. Don't y'all think that's strange? Y'all don't think that's strange. Jordan, pay attention. Do you not think that's strange? Here's the question again. During slavery, we farmed all the produce in all of these countries, even here. The white man didn't farm. We were out there in those fields growing crops, growing tobacco, sugar cane, growing beans, growing corn, raising all of their, their crops. Why we don't know about farming now? How old is slavery? Slavery ain't even uh, 200 years old yet. It's like about 165 years ago. 160 something or something like that. Why we don't know how to farm? Y'all see how this devil works? What, Dominic? No, what's the question? It wasn't a question, it was just that's been answered question. I don't need rhetorical in my in my in my studies. Why we don't know how to farm? Because we, we we raise cattle, raise crops all these hundreds of years working for this white man for free. I mean what you just depend on the white man, the white man can give you money. Are there enemies that can give you money? That we get made money. No, they made it against the law for you to own a farm, to, to, to farm, to, to, to raise cattle, to, to, to raise your own crop, to build your own house. When we were building all the houses in slavery, doing all the work, then all of a sudden when we were free to do it for ourselves, they, they made laws against you so you couldn't do it. If you, if you did, it had to benefit them, like sharecropping. And sharecropping just ended in 1965. Y'all don't even get it. Because I'm going to tell you, this knowledge should still be in your minds. I should supposed, still supposed to have some of this knowledge. A lot of people just, should still have this knowledge. They should know, should know, how, know how to farm without having to go to uh, Texas A&M and all these other schools. We should be master farmers. As much as our parents, forefathers, worked in those fields, we should have a body of knowledge that surpasses anybody that's out there farming. See, fact is, this white man steals from you even the things that he made you do in slavery. And he stole it, took it back from you. Like your, 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 your building skills. When we building all these antebellum homes all throughout the, throughout the South, 
He took that away from him. We're supposed to be the master builders around here. We're supposed to be the master builders around here, building better than anybody that could build around here. Why we don't have that, 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 that skill anymore. And they got, they got black builders that build bridges that's still standing right now today that were built during slavery. You know, hear me though. Why we don't have that knowledge no more? The fact is, you know, this white man been stealing from you, and then, like I said, the fact is, if it ain't benefiting him, he's stealing it from you, he's taking it, and he's killing. Because the fact is, we supposed to have that knowledge, and we don't have it. All right, let's continue on. Okay. Like I said, it's funny how the Israelites, the slaves, grew all the produce in America, Brazil, the islands, etc. Now, by majority, we have no knowledge of farming. We have to depend on our enemies for food. How is that? We were the farmers, sharecroppers after slavery. Why do we, why do we not know how to raise crops? It's not, and, and, uh, as far as what, what Ezekiel 4.13 says, it doesn't matter if you are vegan. Or a meat eater. If you are not growing your own food, it will be defiled. It, it will be defiled. Your food will be defiled if you are not drawing pay attention. If you are not growing your own food, it's going to be defiled bread. Because it, your enemy is going to defile it for you. He's going to put something in it that you don't supposed to eat. When your enemy say to you that you are one people. Do they treat us the same? Can you walk freely in your community without them pulling you over, beating you and locking you up because you are under suspicion for walking while black? Do they harass their people the same way in their communities? We are not one people. Don't believe that lie. Because the fact is, they're going to tell you you're one people, but they don't treat you and your community the same way they treat their people in their communities. If that's the one people, why they why they not harassing the hell out of their people in their community, their kids? You know, our kids can walk in the community just just playing and, and doing things that they normally do. Look at Lamentation four and seventeen. See, this is these don't agree that these are the reason why we know that this Bible doesn't pertain to everybody because the fact is all of these prophecies and things that, that's in this Bible only pertains to a people that, that these prophecies say it's going to happen to. Come on. As for us, our eyes have yet failed for a vain help. As for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. And our in our watching, we have watched for a nation that sh could not save us. When the Most High God said to do in Deuteronomy 28, 68, And no man shall buy you, all those attempting to save you was vain help. We always run to that so-called white man who smites us. Then, he run to the, him, then we run to him seeking vengeance. Who's kicking the table? Stop that. All right, let's let's get that let's get that information on that. Let's get Second Maccabees four fifteen through uh, seventeen. Jordan, read. Not setting by the honors of their fathers, but liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. What is that talking about, Jordan? Um, they didn't want to be like the, the um, their ancestors, but they wanted to be. Who like was they? The Israelites. Okay. They didn't want to be like who? Their ancestors. What What did their ancestors do different from them? All the laws. We ain't, do, we ain't doing that either because most of us are not sitting by the honor of our fathers either. We're confused about who we are so we don't even know who our fathers are. Our forefathers who kept the law, statutes, and commandments. But 
liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. This could be said today because we still like what that white man like. We still do only what he does. We we like his styles. You know, if he if he if he if he uh rocking blonde hair, we got Negroes with, with, with cotton wool hair walking around with, with, with scabs of blood in their head. I'm gonna tell you, you look like a damn zoo cloud. I, I see a lot of these young men walking around with this blonde stuff in the top of their head. They look like skunks. They look like skunks, black as ace of spades, but but got yellow hair in the top of their head. Look like a bunch of damn skunks with a stripe. After a while, I'm just thinking they're gonna they're gonna put some stuff out their butt that uh, just mess the whole dog on, uh, place up. Cause they look like a skunk. It's just like the glory of the Grecians most of all. You see the white man with it on? You 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 put it on. You know, it's and you look at the black women with, with, with that stuff on. They look like a, they look like Miss Piggy. A lot of black women just look like Miss Piggy with lipstick. They look like a pig with lipstick. Walking around with blonde hair, you're black as on no what. I be sitting up there like wow. We surely, we truly are confused about who we are and what we are. We still, this, this applies to us today. Not setting by the honor of our fathers. We don't do the commandments like, like our forefathers did. And we like the glory of the Grecians, the white man, most of all. Okay, let's continue. Second Maccabees 4 16. By reason we're of sore calamity. Came upon them. What's that sort of calamity, Jordan? We're gonna put it in today's standard. What's that sort of calamity? Hmm. I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say a white cop pull you over just for a traffic violation. Next thing you know, you're dead. Sort of calamity. That's that's calamity. You just get pulled over for a, just a minor traffic violation. Just both get a ticket or something. Next thing you know, you you, you got a clip emptied in your butt. So a calamity. Okay, read the next part. So a calamity came upon them. For they had them to be their enemy. That's when he was your enemy. When he came and pulled you over, and he came to your car. Next thing you know, you got you got his whole, you got the whole clip in you, as a as a going away party. I'm gonna send you away with a lot of lead. Okay, they had to be their enemies. Come on, and Avengers. Okay, here come the Avengers. Now, the, 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 the so-called grieving family, they grieving a little bit, but they want money. They get them, a, a attorney just pops up to them. You don't even have to go and get no attorney. The attorney just shows up. Hey, we can win this. We can make some money. Now, you got a grieving family... Oh my, my husband was, well, he was a lovely man. I don't know why they did this to me. It won't be, there won't be no more Christmases with him and no more Thanksgiving and he won't be playing Santa Claus for the children anymore. I can explain why the most I got had that, had that white man to put him to death. Cause he was in the Dollar Tree and everything. But the fact is, you, he, he, he's your enemy then you want vengeance because you're going to go to the court system seeking vengeance and you're not going to get it come on <coughs> whose customs they followed so earnestly Woo. what that mean Jordan Suddenly, what does it mean? Help him out. What were we going over? We're going over well and uh, What did he just say? What did George just read? 
Yeah, but what did you just read? It's constantly followed so earnestly. Now, what does that mean? Like they're, uh, when, uh, whenever they're doing, uh, they're going into idolatry, like uh, now, what, Dominic. What does that mean? Whose customs they follow earnestly? They follow their enemies' custom, customs. What customs? Their holidays, their their practices, their religions. Okay. Their yeah, that's what that's what that's what this is saying. We are we. We are being just like them. What did the what, what did Proverbs three thirty one say? Y'all should just be able to say this one because this is one of the one of the baby Proverbs three thirty one. We just read it today. Whose custom they follow so earnestly. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. That's what they do it. They envy in the custom of the oppressors. They're in the envying the oppressor when they're following their their customs earnestly. He, the, the most I got to envy thou not the oppressor. And y'all don't understand why a lot of these people come up dead. He just pick y'all off in the community because... You know what? You're so, you're so messed up in idolatry and stuff, and you're envying your oppressor. You're doing a lot of things that the Most High God can kill you in a minute. He get tired of you. Okay, so you're following his customs so earnestly. What else? Jordan? Okay. And unto whom they desire to be like in all things. Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways, but it says we are following his customs so earnestly and want to be like them in everything. And you don't understand. I don't understand why he killed me. We try to be just like him. That's what that one people thing. Y'all, 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 y'all can't get a handle on the fact that you're not one people. And the fact is, this white man proved it to you every day when he killed one of y'all in the street. When he kills and murders and slays your, your 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 fathers and your sons and your and your nephews and your nieces, you're not one people. Y'all get rid of that. Get get that out of your mind. And the people that he got standing up over you, like Jesse Jackson and all these other people, even your ministers, they they are reigned by this white man. Don't believe these people because you're not one people. Because he he's slaying you. This, this, your ministers are taking out, breaking you, taking all your money. You can't build because of them. You're not able to build anything that's away from these people. Because your ministers and all of these so-called leaders want to continue to push this integration nightmare that it ain't only thing he's integrating into as, as Martin Luther King finally realized is, is a house, a burning house. These people are slaughtering you in that burning house. They're just killing you. When do you? When are you going to have a desire to not be around these people, and not to envy anything they do, not to be part of anything they do? Once you take that stance with these white folks and with all of these other nations, they're gonna beg you, because the fact is that that one point two trillion dollars is gonna be hard for them to uh, recover from. Hard to recover from. When you stop building around, oh no, we don't want to want y'all even around us. We'll grow. I don't care. We got miniature crops. We're gonna grow something. We'll eat tomato soup the rest of the week. Forget it. We don't want none of y'all stuff. You start doing that, I guarantee you, these white folks they they have a change of mind. No, we don't want nothing to do with you. Go away. Y'all feed your own people. Not even saying you ain't got to worry about us speaking Spanish or anything else. You know. This is America. Well, you can take your American ass over there. We don't want you around us. We see you across the see you across this track. You're gonna have some problems. All right, continue. Second Maccabees four seventeen. 
For it is not a light thing to do wickedly against the laws of God. But the time following shall declare these things. You Israelites, you are the ones violating your father's laws. He is only punishing you. So I'm going to read Amos 3 and 1 and 3 and 2. I hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you. Read that again. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying. Okay, let me ask this question. Now, we go back to the to the land of Egypt. Who did the Most High God bring up out of Egypt? The Israelites. Who are the Israelites? Um, George, who are the Israelites? Black, Hispanic, Native Americans. Give me more detail. We're going to take it back to Israel. Who is, who is Israel? The students of Israel. I mean, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But who is Israel? The twelve tribes. Those are the descendants of Israel. Oh, it's Jacob. Why is Why is Jacob? Why is it Jacob? Explain to me why Jacob is Israel. Because he's the son of Abraham. And I, he's the grandson of Abraham and the son of Isaac. The son goes in the lineage. Okay. But let's do this and give me, explain to me why his name is Israel. If his name is Jacob. Because he's a prince that has power of God. Okay. Well, who told him that? No, I did. Okay, we'll say an angel, which is which is spoken directly by God, Most High God. So Most High God changed his name to Israel, whereas the prince has thou power with God and with men, and will prevail. So we're gonna take it back. So we're gonna we're gonna identify who Israel is. That is correct. Israel is the, what, so he's talking about the children of Israel, all the descendants of Israel, all the sons of Jacob. Now, who? How many sons Jacob had? Twelve. All the descendants of those sons. Actually, you know, Joseph, well, the, the sons of Joseph, but Ephraim and Manasseh was not his son, but he claimed them. But the fact is, they are his sons. He told, told Joseph those are his sons. Those are his. So he added Joseph, uh, Manasseh, uh, Joseph children. That's why Joseph is not in this. His grandkids are. His kids are. Alright. So he's talking to Israel. That, that he brought up out of, out of Egypt. Did, did anybody else was included? There are other people on the earth did. When, 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 uh, when Amos was around. There are other people on the earth. The white man was around. The Arab man. You know, all the Asians, what, what, you know, uh, uh, Moab and uh, Ammon were, uh, the, the descendants of Lot were around. Other people that were around. Come on. Amos 3 and 2. You only have I known of all the families on the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. All the, all the things that you do, I'm going to punish you. You're the only people I know. So, that's him telling you, I'm your father. You, you, you are my children. And any, anything you do, I'm whooping that behind. I'm going to punish you. It, it, see, it, it, it makes it clear with scriptures like this because the fact is, the most I got ain't never, he, he don't care about that white man, what he's doing. He's he going to he get his punishment, but the most I got is punishing us for everything we do bad. That's like me going over beating the neighbors, kids, and I don't even know the neighbors. The most I got is telling you that exactly that. I don't know them people. I'm going to whoop your behind for everything you do because you in my house. You my children. The most I got only punished the Israelites for our sins. Let's get Lamentations 4 and 18 and 19, Jordan. They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. Our end is near. Our days are fulfilled. 
for our end is come. This so-called white man in our communities haunt our steps that we cannot freely go into the streets in our own communities. They kill us in our own communities. I'm not talking about criminal activity, but it was like walking down the street, some coming from work. You know, you kill a man, or you, you, you beat up a man that's on the subway, that's don't work long shift, fall asleep on the doggone train. He wakes up, people beating the hell out of him. I mean, just like, look, I'm just coming from, I'm tired. I'm coming from work. Police beating the hell out of him on the train. These are not funny details. You know, that's your step being haunted. You can't even go home, be walking at night in your street, getting off at a midnight shift, just get, trying to get home from work. Come on. Levitation 419. Our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of the heaven. They, they pursued us upon the mountains. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. Okay. It tells you who they are. Edomites. That's who, it, that's who they are. These Edomite pass law because you know why they... Why, why, they, why is it, I say they Edomites? What leads me to believe that? Are persecuted or swifter than the eagles of the heavens? Yeah, Edomites. Because every time those Edomites come, what symbol do they, they have? Eagle. They have an eagle. These Edomite pass laws, they pursue us upon the mountains. We're not talking about upon the mountains, a big tall mountains. What the mountains am I talking about? What the mountains the Most High God is talking about? Yeah, we, we, we ain't talking about no mountain goats. We, we claiming mountains. They pursue us on the mountains. What mountains are we talking about? See, because most like I consider government the mountains. They pursue us in their governments. All these laws that they pass. All these, all these uh, prosecutions that they do. Like I'm saying, and you don't have to have done a thing, but they can, they can prosecute you. George, would you stop? They can prosecute you. They pursue you in their mountains. You, you might pass laws in their governments against us. They void the law when it, when it pertains to us. Murdering an Israelite in self-defense self because they fear for their lives. Defense. We shouldn't be alarmed when the Most High God warned us that this would happen if we disobeyed Him in His law. Let's get that, that, that warning. Leviticus 26, 14. Come on, Jordan. But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments. You children of Israel, if you choose not to listen to the Most High God, and do all his commandments, come on. And if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant. And if you despise the Most High God's statutes, and hate his judgments, that you would do, not do his commandments and you break his covenant by not doing his commandments this is what this is where we are today we breaking his covenant every day not doing his commandments we abhor his judgments come on Leviticus 26:16 I also will do this unto you I will even appoint over you terror what terror okay consumption and the burning og that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain. Tell me, stop kicking the table, please. For your enemies shall eat it. Okay. The Most High God kept His word because He placed terrorists over the Israelites. Every land we in, we got terrorists over us. This so called white man has terrorized us from captivity to captivity, starting at the Grecians, the Romans, Portugal, Spain, British, etc. This so-called white man has consumed us to tears, mutilating us, burning us, raping us, skinning us, hanging us, beating us. This is terrorism. We, have, we will have children, but the enemy shall consume them in their sports and entertainments. Wherever he wants to do with them, he does. Our children no longer listen to their parents, but rather that so-called white man. You can't get your kids to listen to you now because it's against the law to put your foot up their butt. They call the police on you, you know, next thing you know, 
you know, you in jail. And with me, me and my kids will disconnect that from that day on. They call the law on me. They can never come in my presence, in my house. I just pay to keep them gone. You, you stay where you at. You just, you let that white man raise you the way he wants you. He want to raise you. If he want to sneak in your room and, and rape you every night, fine by me. I ain't gonna stop him. Cause when you had when you had freedom in your own house, you didn't want to be here, but you want to be that white man. You know, cause he uh, that's the only thing he gonna do is get you and turn you out. Be a little homosexual by the time I see you next time. Yeah, that's yeah. That's one put me in jail. Mm -hmm. Look at him now. Can't even walk. White man been digging up his butt so much he can't even, he can't even hold a bowel movement. <coughs> I'm, I'm just being real with it. You know, my kid. Any one of my kids try to put me in jail for uh, for uh, for, uh, for for uh, try to discipline them. Last time that I would ever talk to him. Last time. Last time. I'll pay to keep them gone. No, when y'all turn 18, y'all on your own anyway, so got a few more years. I, I hate to be that, be that way, but the most I got say, don't, don't, do not glory in a multitude of ungodly kids. I take no glory in, in uh, ungodly children. Cause this is the way the world is today. You don't have you don't have control of your own kids because of this white man. Your kids can turn into demons and they can be demons. You know, <clears throat> he don't want you to make them righteous. He wants you to make them wicked because you know what? Making them wicked, he makes money off of them. They don't understand that detail. This white man makes money off of them. If you ain't if you are not making him money, he has no use for you. If you if he's not if you're not entertaining him, if you're not be going through his prison system where you're paying him all this money so that to lock you up, you he's he's you know the wall not the wall the, the targets and all these other companies that go in there and pay you ten cents an hour while you locked up in prison, making them products and stuff, call centers being done through prison. He's if you if you're not making him money, you you're useless to him. Here's, here's another thing, you know, and all y'all have not considered this. This white man, y'all, y'all know what culling is. Who know what culling is? What they call culling? Culling. C u l l i n g. C u l l i n g. When they, this is what they in the wild. Say for instance, they got too many elephants in in, in the wilderness. It, and it's destroying the population with the white man considered because they don't did something and all these elephants are, 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 are raised up and they got herds and herds of elephants what they would do they'd go out there and cull them they'd go out there and kill so many of them the white man would go out there and kill so many elephants to to, to bring the numbers down just like from a helicopter they just go out there and just shoot them boom boom they, they they show this on on, on uh, some of these animal animals channels. Not only only elephants, deers, and every any any, any animal. They do that. They do that with black folks too, because like in our communities and stuff. Who you think are killing all these people? They're calling you. This is what they're doing. They're killing off a lot of y'all because a lot of y'all are not needed. You're getting too overpopulated. Like in Chicago, they calling a lot of y'all. There's a process called cold, and they they just call him. White man going there and kill out. That's why they not going to jail for it because oh it's been authorized. It ain't gonna be some. It, it, it's not gonna be some that there's gonna be in in, in the public. Because when they pass these verdicts and they say there was no wrong done, it, it's a reason behind that. They you know somebody from higher up is it, a secretive public thing. Oh, we got to call some of these people because it's too many of them. And, and, and like I said, there's too many for us to support, and they're just getting out of hand. You're going to have to kill a few of them. Now they got these black, white cops, white people, dressing up in black folks' skin. 
So a lot of black folks that you think are doing crime, it's actually white people killing other killing black folks. Cause they got on black skin. Black skin. I'm saying black skin, they look black. Black hands and arms, they got it all around their neck and all their face. You can't tell them you can't tell if they black or not. Something for y'all to realize. Something for y'all to think about. You're being cold and you don't even know it. All right, Leviticus 26 and 17. And I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. They, they that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. The Most High God is against us. This is why that so-called white man can kill you in your communities while 10 to 20 Israelites stand around and watch. This is why. Because the Most High God say, it's going to happen. This is why our women can go in these Arab-owned and Asian-owned stores in our communities, complain about poor service, and get punched and kicked by Arab and Asian men. Esau has had a perpetual hatred for Jacob. He is reigning over us. Our young men see a cop car while standing on the street corners, flees, and the police isn't pursuing them. This happened in our communities. You know, you, you have a group of a young men just standing in, in, in the, uh, on, on, on the corner. Instead of, instead of being uh, messed with the, by the cops, they just run off. I ain't got time to be messed with that. Let's go, man. Let's get the hell up out of here. Come to Popo. Because the first thing they're going to do is search you and all that other bull crap. Let's get out of here. Children of Israel, you must understand that the Holy Bible is our records, prophecies, and laws. It don't belong to anybody else. So if anybody else is talking to you about this Bible that's, that's not of Israel descent, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, anybody from other uh, other national nations shouldn't be talking to you about your own, about your Elohim. It's not their God. So what was what you think? What do you think they, are they going to tell you the truth about your Elohim, the one that they took from you in the first place when they came upon you? And killed you for following him. See, you know, they ain't going to tell you that it was dim. But then they want to come up with you with all this, you know, Jehovah Witness and stuff. And ringing on your doorbell and knocking on your door. These are the same people that was killing our forefathers for following our Elohim. Was, was putting them on crosses. Now you walking around, you ignorant as hell, walking around with a cross wrapped around your neck. They was killing millions of Jews on that cross. Now they could just, they got a bunch of y'all just fooled like, wow. We killed all they people with these crosses and then look at them. We got them, we got them. We still got them, look at them. Every time you see Jesus, yeah, we still got them, look at them. Ecclesiastes 26 and 19. My son, keep the flower of thine age sound, and give not thy strength to strangers. Focus on the laws, statutes, and commandments in your youth, and don't give what the Most High God gave only to you. Don't give to the heathens or other nations. When you are looking down on your people, hating your complexion, your hair, you are actually hating your Elohim and loving your oppressor. Here's why I say that. Give me Daniel 79. Read that, Jordan. I behold, I beheld, till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fire, the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Okay. Okay, why did I say that previously before Jordan read the scripture? When you're looking down on your people, hating your complexion and your hair, why did I put this script? Uh, why did this scripture? What I'm saying, this scripture, don't pay attention, because this question can come to you too. Huh? I need an answer. Why did I, when people? Hating their hair and all of this stuff. Why did I add this scripture? Because their hair is like Jesus Christ. That's not Jesus. God. 
and you hating your hair. Okay, Dominic? And when, it talks, when it talks about like these characteristics, because they're part of you, and you know, God made you, like, He loves you. But, like, he doesn't want, and if you're hating Him, like, because, uh, like, somewhere in the Bible they say that. All right, Jordan, what are you were saying? And if you, if you hate your own features, then you hate God. That's, 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 that's a great answer. Because if the most high like God's hair is like pure wool, and you hate your hair, and you want it straight like goat hair, God doesn't have, out, most high like God doesn't have goat hair. He got woolly hair. He got, he got this kind of hair. This is wool. Pure wool. That you can do all kinds of things with. This is wrapped and wrapped and wrapped and wrapped. It's twisted, 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 twisted. Locked and locked and locked and locked. You know, the most like God got pure wool. He don't have no, no straight hair. No, no, uh, no goat hair. That's a hair, that's a hair of the demon. Why are you trying to be like something that's envy thou not the oppressor? You, you like I said, the most like God got woolly hair. When you walking up to the twelve gates, and that angel standing there with woolly hair, and he see you with your weave and all that other stuff, you're not even getting in. There ain't gonna be nobody in the kingdom with, without a beard. So you you in the, you standing in the line got got no hair on your face, and you are a fully grown man that that's capable of growing hair and been shaving every day. Because this white man has, has trained you as a boy, and you've been a boy all your damn life. You stand up in the and stand up in the line trying to get into their kingdom. Oh, you gonna get picked off before you even get get to the line. You, you know you can't come in. Got that bald head and that, and, and that shaved that well shaven face. Nah, you're not coming in, bro. Because the only thing that got no hair on their face is little kids and women. You know. Now, if you're a fully grown woman and you're growing a beard, you need to shave that off because you know what? It's, it's okay for you to not to shave your face. You're not a you're not a man. You know. All right. The ancient of days is the Most High God who is before days. Try to wrap your mind around that. He is not just a spirit, but he also has a body because he wears clothes and he sits and stands. The Most High God's hair is like pure wool. The last started not in the New Covenant, but in Genesis. Many of you who read Genesis do not understand the many parables and allegories in that book. Let me clear some of them up. Remember, Daniel saw in his vision that the hair on the Most High God's head was like pure wool. Okay, let's start at Genesis. Genesis 1.26. Dominic, I want you to start reading that. And God said, let's make man in our image. Let us make who? Man in our image. So God's hair was like pure wool, come on. After our likeness. After our likeness, come on. Let us make man. Is man is, what, what's the plural for man? Men. Men. Now, he don't made all these animals. You think he just made one man? No. He made a lot of men. But he said, what man? Let us make man. Let us make man. So what is he referred to? One person. One person. Let us make one man in our image. Come on. And let, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Now he's talking about other, many, many, many men. He want, he want one man made in his image after our likeness and let them. And who he refer? He referred to that man or you refer to all of them? All the men have what? Have dominion over the fish of the sea. So don't all men have dominion over the fish of the sea? Yeah. As long as you're in a boat. And what else? And over the fowl of the air. Don't we have dominion over the fowls of the air? Yeah. Unless you're still alive. When you're still alive, because if you're dead, them, them doggone vultures come and eat you up. All right, come out. And over the cattle. And over all the earth. Don't the men have a dominion over the cattle in the earth? Over, over the earth? So he said, let them, not only that one man, but let them, all of them, come on. 
and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Okay, let all of them have dominion over all of these things. But he said, let us make man one of them in our image. So let's get Genesis 1, 27. And further, this, this, because these are allegories and parables that people don't really understand. They get confused. Come on. So God created man in his own image. He's talking about how many? Man. Like only one man. He created man in his image. Like he said at first. Let us make man. Okay. In the image of God created he him. He made that man in his image. Created he him. Come on. Male and female created he them. So he created other men too. Other men and women. He created them. So because he said let, let us let them have dominion. So the men and women that he created also have dominion over the fowls, over the over the cattle, over the fish, all of them. So one of the men, which was that Adam, because there were other men upon the earth, so he did not follow the genealogy of those other Adams, did he? Is there any detail in the Bible say, you know, the, the second, the, the, the 256th Adam that the Most High God created, here's his genealogy. No. He just gave you the genealogy of that one Adam. That was the one he created in his image. Which we all come from. Here we go again. God created man in his image. This means God created one man in his image. Then he created male and female. Them. Is this correct interpretation? Well let's see if the Most High God considered this. Let's get 2nd Andrews George. 2nd Andrews 6.54 And after these, Adam, also whom thou madest Lord of all my creatures, of him come we all. Of him come we all. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. The man that the Most High God made in his own image, he made Lord of all the creatures. We all come from this Adam, because Noah was a descendant of this Adam. The, that, that one man. Because all the other descendants of Adam were destroyed after the flood, after Noah. Of the other Adam. Okay, Second Andrew 6.55. All, all this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. The, the Most High God made the world for our sakes. Let's get the proof, 2nd Ezra 7 and 10. And I said, It is so, Lord, then said he unto me, Even so is Israel's portion. Even so also is Israel's portion. Okay? 2nd Ezra 7 and 11. Because for their sakes I made the world, and when Adam Dominic, stopped kicking the table, when at, when and when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. The Most High God made the world for Israel's sake. You see how the pieces fit. The Most High takes it back to Adam. All right, Second Ezra six. Let's get back to Second Ezra six and fifty five, fifty six. As for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said. That they are nothing. They they are what? That they are nothing. Most I got a word about. That's, that's what uh, Amos three and one and three and two is all, uh, all also talking about. Hear this word that the, that the Lord has uh, spoken against the old children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up out of the land out of the land of Egypt, saying, "You only have I known of all the people, all the families of the earth." So all other people, he said, he he only knows you. So. Everybody else to him are nothing. Come on. And it has likened me. Wait a minute. Of uh, nothing but. But be like unto spittle. What is spittle? Spit. spit. They, they like spit. Now, y'all running behind somebody that most I got considered spit. Come on. Okay. And it has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. He uh, the like of the abundance of them as a drop that falls from a vessel. What does that mean, Dominic? It's pretty much like whatever, like if you have a bucket in your hand, like a little drip of water comes out, and then you go back to the water, if they keep going. Yeah, you're not gonna keep going for a little bitty drop of water that falls out the bucket. You'd be like, man, let me keep rolling with this. I got this all I got all of this water in this bucket. I'm not gonna sit there and cry over oh water, come back in the bucket. Yeah, you'd be like, man, let me get out of here. Hope I don't waste no more. Now, everybody come from Adam, but the Most High God said that 
they are nothing but be like spit. And the abundance of them is a drop that falls from a vessel. If you think that the Bible is for everybody, then why is this in the Bible? Here it is again. Let's read Isaiah 40 and 15. And Isaiah was a great prophet. Come on. Let's read that again. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. Okay. The likeness of the abundance of them that, as a drop that falleth from, from the vessel. This is what Ezra said. Okay. And Isaiah said the same thing. Behold, all the nations are as a drop of a bucket. Come on. And are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold. Okay, so what's that dust coming on the balance? What that what's that referring to? Hmm? Mm -hmm. What is that? I'm gonna tell you, a balance. What's what a time? Okay, so say for instance, you need to weigh this. They get a balance. They put a ten, maybe say a five or ten pound on this scale. With, no, they'll estimate what this is. They might say this is five pounds. They'll put it on this, you know, put five pounds on the scale and put this book on there. And then it's still up. It's still, it's still up. They might, you know, we're still high on this side. They might put a, another pound. Then come up a little bit and then put another pound. Come up a little bit until they get a balance. Now, if you are, uh, if you weigh dust, you put some dust on the scale. Would it move it? When you put when you put a little dust on the scale, would it move it? No. The scale to say it weigh even a, an ounce. Most I got consider every everybody like a, like that that dust on the scale. All the other nations like dust that that on the scale. So the world's up. See, the fact is, once you start getting the knowledge of this Bible, the world is upside down because these people that's ruling over us are considered as that dust. The Most High God made us, and He made these other folks so that we can rule over them, that they can be our servants. We don't supposed to be working as hard. We don't, we don't supposed to be doing these nine to fives. They are supposed to be one doing that. But but you know what? Because we don't want to obey the God of Heaven. The creator of all things, we got to do all of this. Y'all got it messed up. Y'all serving the wrong God because as long as you're serving that white man, that's your God. And you're going to continue to work and, and, and dance and shuck and jive for him. I'm tired of shucking and I'm tired of jiving. I'm tired of dancing for, for my enemy. This is these are the words of the Most High, and these are the words I believe. Read that again. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket, and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the Ow. the isles as a very little thing. Did the Most High think of all the other nations as a small drop of water that fall from a bucket, and count them as a small dust on a balance? Thus has no has no weight. I got waste. Has no weight on the scale. So dust has no weight on the scale. So continue Isaiah forty sixteen. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn. Now the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. What is he referring to right here? Um. The other nations can offer our Elohim Lebanon, the whole country of Lebanon, and all the animals in it. The other nations can offer that as a sacrifice. Every animal in Lebanon and the whole nation of Lebanon, he can, they can offer it up as a sacrifice, and he said it won't be enough. That's like him saying, and Texas, and all the animals in Texas is not sufficient to burn as a sacrifice. He ain't accepting. All the nations can offer all that to him, and he wouldn't accept it. Is there a lot of cows in Texas? Yeah. A lot of animals in Texas? Mm -hmm. What about the deer and all that? He said you can chunk all that stuff in the fire and it won't be enough. 
that he said he won't accept it because it's not sufficient, not enough. Come on. Okay. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing in vanity. Okay, what's vanity? Flies. They're less than nothing. What's less than nothing? When you go less than zero, what's that? Negative. Negative. So they ain't even zero. They less than zero. How can you be that far off? I don't y'all see the Elohim that y'all serve. He said everybody else is less than nothing. And why are you serving nation that, that is less than nothing to him? Because you have done less than nothing to him too. So that's why you are serving those nations. He put them under. You put those nations over you because you are not serving him. All nations outside of Israel are nothing but lies. Now that you know that this Bible is only created for the Israelites, what must you do? Matthew 24 and 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. The Messiah knew that there would come a time when we would be deceived because of what the prophet said. Dominic, read Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Read that again. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Okay. Continue. Because that, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, saying thou hast forgiven, forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget, forget thy children. Because our enemies mentally destroyed us, and we lack knowledge of our Elohim, and of who we are as a people, this is why the Most High God is punishing us and rejecting us. Because Israel was destroyed due to all the captivities prior to, prior to and during the period that the Messiah was on the scene, he saw that many of our people had been already destroyed. Matthew 24 and 5. He, he saw a lot of us already were, were being destroyed. Come on. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, shall deceive many. Because, you know, he was seeing how the chief priests who were of, of the nation of Edom already taken over the church. He was seeing this. You know, he was seeing that they were already coming and taking over the church. With the, and, and when they kill off everybody, he, 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 he was seeing that. Because you know what? Once you kill, chop off the head, they can tell you anything. Because the followers... You know, already been through so many captivities. You know, the, the tail is just wagging. They can put new leaders up and, all right, we, well, they, they say we got to do this. If you are destroyed and don't know the prophecies in this Bible, anybody can come to you in the name of Jesus as they are doing today. Come on. First John 2 and 3. And hereby we do know that we know him. If we keep his commandment. This is how you know the Messiah and the Most High God. Come on. First John 2 and 4. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. This is how you are being deceived. Many are coming, deceiving you in the name of Jesus to Christ, but does nothing he says. Continue Matthew 24 and 24. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, shall show great signs and wonders and so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect all of these false Christ and false prophets have arisen and have deceived the elect of the most high God who are the elect let's get the elect Isaiah 45 and 4 but Jacob my servant saved and Israel my, and Israel my elect who? Israel my elect so Everybody, just because you think believe in believe in the, in, in the Messiah, the Christ, Jesus the Christ, you you're not an elect. You you got to be an Israelite from the descendants of Jacob. Come on. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. Israel of the elect of the Most High God. That's that's you, so-called blacks, Hispanics, the Native Americans, those of the diaspora scattered throughout the world. You are the people of the book. In conclusion, 
The Holy Bible belongs exclusively to the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Those are the diaspora scattered throughout the lands where the Most High God scattered us. The so-called white man takes claim to our records to deceive the Israelites with the false Christ. This is why and how that the so-called white Jesus is hanging in your fellowship halls and in your homes. The elect has been deceived as Christ predicted. Each time that the Edomites came to power, they always came to take our Elohim away and to deny the Israelites the rights to worship him. What makes you think that our enemies, including the Arab man, has changed their stripes? When the Arabs conquered the Israelites, 627 A.D., Battle of the Fars, they forced the Quran upon the Israelites, killed our fathers, sold and raped our mothers. I count, I count the East Edomites, the Arabs, Moab and Ammon, the Hamites, enemies to the Most High God and His people. They must pay for their transgressions against the Most High God's people as it is written. Thir let's get Revelation 13 to 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. If you believe that the Bible is a true book, then you would believe that these nations plotted together to make this nation of Israel cease from among men to the effect that the people who were heavily involved in our destruction are now claiming to be the Jews see the truth for what it is let's get Revelations 2 and 9 that's our final scripture I know thy works in tribulation and poverty but thou art rich and I know the blasphemy of them which say that, that which say they are Jews and they are not but are the synagogue of Satan this is the chief place of, of, of the worship of Satan so those who say they are Jews, they just the devil, the chief place of Satan. So if you are under that thought that the Messiah came to save everybody and the Bible is salvation for all, you're missing the conversation in the Bible totally. You have been you have been uh, trained and schooled by your slave former slave masters who are, who are bent on not keeping. Uh, telling you the truth because as long as you are, are, are going under that premise we'll never get salvation only until one third of us wake up after that it's over this song and dance will, be, will no longer be the, the, the concert will end at that one third point when one third of us will wake up and we come back to our Elohim as, as the descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob uh, as the twelve tribes of Israel under, under one of those names Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and, and the other nine tribes, that's when it's over. And you can you can do whatever, you know, like I'm saying, the rest, the rest of y'all, if you haven't come to the understanding then, I'm telling you, I'll, I will fear for you. I'll fear for you then. This Bible is not for everybody. It's not everybody's book. You know, I'm going over scriptures that, you know, I'm going over solid scriptures that tells you who this Bible pertains to. That your so-called Christian pastors and your so-called Christian church can't explain that without telling such a horrible lie that even a little child, I'm like, that's not what it says. Even a little child won't tell you, that's not what it says. need to wake up. Time is running short. Most I got, you know, 400 years will be uh, next year. August 20th will be, will be 400 years that we've been in this country as slaves. We're still slaves here. So, I'm telling you this. That sky can crack open any time after that. Uh, prior to that but as I say I like to thank my full, uh, over 9300 uh, Facebook followers and YouTube subscribers my Facebook page is the at sign at live L-I-V-E Shabbat S-H-A-B-B-A-T 
Class, C L A S S, all one word. And my Facebook page is live. Now my uh, YouTube page is live Shabbat class, all one word. You can. Uh, I don't really do much on on uh, YouTube anymore because uh, they deem my classes uh, not suitable for all users. So. You know, it's, it's, I still upload them, and uh, you know, for my YouTube subscribers. But you know, I, I, I'm on Facebook mostly now. You could you could like, subscribe, or uh, 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 send a message on either uh, either uh, platform. I normally check my YouTube at least once or twice a week, and my Facebook probably almost every day. So you can like. Now, if you are not one of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel if you're not from uh, the so called black Hispanic Native American or those of the diaspora that suffered through the that forefathers suffered through the sub-Saharan and the transatlantic slave trade this is this message is not for you so you know be respectful I'm not on your on your page uh, 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 listening to your videos and, and cussing and talking all kind of crap to you you know the message is not for you. You know if you don't like what I'm, what I'm, what's said, just move on. It's not for you. And I already said who it's for in the beginning of the message before you get to this point. If it didn't, if, if I didn't say your your na na nation, it's not for you, mind you. But our people are in all nations, so you could you know our Israelites can be in your nation, but you might not be an Israelite. You might be the people that had the Israelites in captivity. And still as unrepented as possible. But anyway, I hope you hope you got some out of this. Family and friends. And with that, I'm saying Shalom. Shalom.